Are we live? What's good, great people? I am Ezel Moon, and I have a special guest in the building today. Actress, poet, doula, podcast creator, visual artist, a woman of so many hats. Coco Elisis shall be joining me for a frank conversation. I want to give a big shout out to my sponsor of this conversation, Red Crown. Join the Crown Club by going to K-R-O-W-N-K-L-U-B.com and purchasing your drip, your fit, all that great stuff. Hey. Hello. Hey, Coco, how are you today? I got to get, you know what? I have to take you off the car because I can't hear anything. Uh-oh. There we go. There we go. And we are live. <laughs> and we are live with Coco Elysis, you guys. Um, Man, how are you this evening? I am doing quite well. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. I know... Um. We had our talks about what it is that you're currently dealing with. And I just want to say, you know, um, just speaking nothing but life, peace, blessings over you and your daughter. And, um, yeah, I, I, I'm i really thankful that you still made the time this evening to uh, come on a frank conversation with me. And I appreciate it. I am very, very grateful. Um, you know, I think we're living in times where it's so easy to just stop yeah. and it's okay to stop but right. sometimes i think for for me i felt like this message what we are going to share on this day needs to happen today and it's empowering for me because somebody needs to hear something today and i don't know who it is but i'm here to deliver it and thank you for inviting me and having me on Hey, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. You are a dynamic woman, if I can just say so. I mean, I was, uh, as I was doing my research on you, I was so, like, from Saints Row to, oh my God, to work with uh, you, uh, um, j your music in, in just so many different parts of the world. I mean, you, you are, wow. Um, I, 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 but first, I want let's start about let's start with the Genesis really quickly. That's Robbins, right. Illinois, right? <laughs> it's not it's not not only for its high per capita for African Americans, but also Dwayne Wade, Bessie Coleman, and you. Um, and no, wait, we leaving out somebody, Nichelle Nichols. Mm. Star Trek. Mm. We have we have Tuskegee Airmen who went and fought with Holly Selassie to fight the Italians. We mm -hmm. have an amazing, oh, and Mr. T, we can't leave out Mr. T. Can't leave out Mr. T. You can't, can't leave out Mr. T. Can't leave out Mr. T. He knocked out Rocky, well, how can we, <laughs> can't forget him, can't. No, 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 no. Um, I, I, you know, it's affectionately called Mudville, mm. Little Mississippi. Mm. It's, it's this is this is how I describe Robbins and the West Side of Chicago. When I started meeting people from the West Side, because I I was so anxious to get out and see the rest of the city. Anytime right. we my mother could to get us out of out of the small town, she made sure we went to the city. We went everywhere we could, and when I met people from the West Side of Chicago, they felt like folks from Robbins, right. and I couldn't figure it out. So <laughs> there is a street that is adjacent to the west side of Robbins that if you stay on and you keep going, you'll be on the west side of Chicago. Oh, wow. So people who wanted more of a rural, you know, living and they wanted to have land and chickens and stuff stayed in Robbins and the ones that wanted <laughs> the city life kept going and went to the north, to the west side of Chicago. Got you, got you, got you. So now I, I wonder, you know, what is it about that, the environment that you were in, right, that just put you on that, creative path that you that you're on hmm. i think it was my mother mm. i think it was her energy she she was a woman who when she came to chicago she read everything she could she read reader's digest she read things about nutrition she read this she read that so and she also was an entrepreneur she yeah. was a seamstress and she would sew and then she her mother died when she was um about eight months old and she was an embroiderer mm. so we i come from a family of of artisans that do things with their hands um 
but there is no well i have you know i have family members that sing in the house and sing in the church but nobody went to have a, a professional career in the arts except maybe one or two nieces and nephews and i i think it was my mother's desire to see things bigger than what she experienced so when she saw that there was an opportunity for me to be involved in something in the arts that she just did it she just made sure and she said sometimes she would take bill money to make sure that I was taking a dance class or taking an acting class. Um, if it was um, the being a Girl Scout, whatever it was, she made sure that if she could make it happen, she could. And then when I became, when I started studying music, I wanted to play saxophone. Right. And she couldn't find a saxophone, but oh. she found the clarinet. Mm. And she put the clarinet in my hands and, and the love of music began then. Now, can you speak to that, though? You know, um, the, the, the sacrificing of, you know, because you, you said she would take bill money and, and put it towards your dance class or music class. Can you speak to that, 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 that type of sacrifice, um, you know, that you, that you quite, quite possibly have done for, you know, your, your, your daughter, for your, your, your children? Like, you know, have, has that, have you ever done, have you found yourself doing stuff like that, you know, keeping that legacy going? Oh, absolutely. It's just, you just make it happen. Yeah. It's that, it's that hustler, hustler spirit or flow spirit. You know, as long my mother told me, as long as you can do something with your hands, you can have some money. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in college, she used to make me, she used to make handkerchiefs and sell it at the, at the church um, just so I could have it. So if she took the bill money. She made sure she hustled it up in another way. That mm -hmm. meant taking another order. She was also a Shackley distributor. This is before people got hip to multi-level marketing. She didn't do Tupperware, right, but she right. did do Shackley. So Shackley was this line of vitamins, and there were you know distributors in Chicago, all over the country. But it was like the first coming of of a, a large line of of um, health, you know, health food and and vitamins and supplements and things like that. Of course, of course. Now I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Now I I I did a little bit of a. Uh multi-level marketing once you know I, I was selling vector knives i'll never forget that you know you know you, the, 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 ve the knives the, the ones with the scissors that cut the penny yeah um i did that too hey look everybody has had to set them knives at least one time in their life at least once you know yes. I, I, <laughs> boy I, i'll never forget and it was a, it was a hard time man. i was I actually used to um also uh i was a door-to-door -door uh meat salesman as well you know just, <laughs> yeah i was slinging meat you know all through the country <laughs> oh ladies and gentlemen was slinging meat. i was slinging oh. meat man i had to i got I had to make it work some kind of way um and, but uh yeah that's, that's a whole nother story for another day this isn't about me it's about you i want to talk up to you really quickly about you have so many titles, musician, actress, poet, screenwriter, voiceover artist, doula, makeup artist, podcast creator, producer, lightweight photographer, visual artist. What does it mean to you to be, to have, to wear so many hats? And, you know, how is each thing that, each thing that you're involved in, how is it reflecting who you are as a person? Hmm. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with me being a Gemini. And Geminis oftentimes get the, the have the reputation of jack of all trades, but master of none. Mm. And mastery comes at different levels. You may master one art at a certain age and master another one at another age, but I can't not do a lot of stuff. That's just how I'm wired. Right. And But everything feeds into everything. There is no such art that I do that doesn't influence how I approach art and all the things that I do help me to become a stronger artist, an artist that's working for more, more authenticity. So I don't know any other way to be yeah. because when I tried and I did try, I tried really hard. You know, I was influenced by the world and, Oh, you got to take one thing and focus on it. And I was miserable. Right, right. Oh, I was miserable. And until I came out of the closet and said, okay, I'm just a multi, a multi genre artist. I do lots of things and, and that's okay. And then people, cause people either knew me as the actress or they knew me as the musician. They rarely put the two together, but it was me. 
because I was compartmentalizing my life and and I would take a break. If I was acting, I wouldn't do music. If I was doing music, I wouldn't act. And then I just was like, you know what? I, I got to do, that was like a little short period when I tried to, to do one thing. It didn't work. Mm. See, it, it, it's, it's such a, it, it's kind of refreshing for me to know that, you know, that, that there are people that believe that that's okay. Because as someone that, 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 that's trying to do, you know, a lot, you know, just trying to build this, because I'm going to do this right here for the rest of my life. You know, mm. the scheduling, the interviewing, the creating the questions, the actual, you know, all of it. I, I enjoy, I enjoy every piece of my dream. It's, it's amazing to know that, oh, okay, like, no, it's, it's okay for you to be, to do so many different things if you feel like that's what works for you. You know, because a lot of, like you said, the, the world will tell you, pick one thing and make sure you're good at that one thing, you know. Um, so, so you broke out of that and now you're, and you're, and you're walking your own path. How does that feel? Scary. Exciting. Great. <laughs> Adventurous. Um, amazing. Yeah. Blessed. Privilege. It's an honor and a privilege to perform. It's another honor and privilege to perform for, to do a lot of different things and to serve. And I love it. I really do love it. I want to talk about some uh, some of the things, some of the labels that you may have. Um, and uh, please forgive me if I mispronounce this, because um, I've been trying all day. <laughs> since, <laughs> since, I've been trying all day. Okay. Synesth synesthesia. Yes. Okay. It's not it's not widely known, and you know, and it happens to about one percent of the population. And you know, it's a condition in which normally separate senses they're not separate. You know, sight may mingle with sound, uh, taste with touch, et cetera. Um, and the senses are cross-wired. You have this title. Um, I wonder, you know, how does this contribute or, and or detract from your art? It does. It, it, it det detracts if you observe it from that level. Mm -hmm. I make it work for me. Right. Um, but there was a, first of all, I had to realize what it was. Mm -hmm. um, and then once I realized what it was, and then I started sharing with others, and I was just like, oh, you're like that too. A lot of artists are. And until somebody shares with you that word, you won't know, and you'll think that something is wrong with you. We We are coming out of this whole model of, one size fits all, do one thing, you are abnormal, and this is what normal is. It's out. That's out. We are different. We are diverse, and it is okay. And when you find out the different wiring that your brain has, it can become your superpower. So if I am, if when I hear the note A and I hear red, I find a way to make it work for me. C is yellow. Um, so I play a, a very non-traditional instrument called the ditli bow, which is an African-American instrument that has its roots in Africa to um, lots of one-string lutes. And it started out with the, a wire on the house, which is why you'll hear in, in blues songs they'll reference house rockers. So when I was making, I wanted to make a fretboard and then the group of individuals that I was starting to play with, they didn't want a fretboard. And then I said, well, I'm going to make my fretboard work for me. So I made my fretboard, the notes, the colors with, with little beads that associate with my synesthesia. So when I don't have to think about where is A, all I, if I want to reference it, all I got to do is look at my fretboard because it's, it's, it's red. It's like a cheat sheet, but it's the perfect cheat sheet for me. You know how people try to share cheat sheets in school? Oh, you yeah. can't share my cheat sheet. My <laughs> cheat sheet got my mojo all mixed up in it. <laughs> no, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like a roadmap. It's a roadmap to my mind that to, to, to help me to do whatever it is I want to do. 
Um, I didn't know it was less than 1%. I guess because I'm when you're in, in a world and you are with your peers and you find out your peers have it, then you don't seem, it doesn't seem weird. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it, it definitely does. I was, and, I was, and as I was re reading about it, I'm like, oh, wow, so people can smell the number seven. And like and and I was just like, it's crazy, you know. I, I well, it's not not crazy. Like it, in my mind, I'm like, it's it's amazing. The right word for for me to describe it is like, it's amazing because I wonder like how I would utilize that to my to my advantage in 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 my art, you know. But seeing how how you do, you know, you made your own cheat sheet, sheet that works for you. It, it's it's to me like I'm I'm in awe, like sincerely. Uh, of you and how and how it is that you how it is that you operate with knowing knowing that you have this um yeah you are you are you are a rare one uh, um <laughs> sincerely um now you there are you also have um you know uh from the web from what i was looking at you know you're also dyslexic and you've uh, struggled with adhd mm -hmm. can you can you speak to us of you know how this didn't inhibit you as you were stepping into your power as a person. Let me see, I'll deal with one at a time. I didn't discover that I was dyslexic until I was in college. And this is during the time when, when you, you know, you left home with a typewriter. <laughs> you leave home with a laptop. And by the time I became a senior is when people started buying laptops. It's like, oh, you have a computer. Oh my goodness. So we had to handwrite compositions. Right. And so one of my professors was like seeing the reverse of of words in, in the wrong order or incorrect or it's not it's not flowing. Um different things that he could see that was consistent. Now at that time I did not go I could have went on campus, but I felt shame. I felt like I was not smart. I felt dumb. I felt I went through so much self sabotaging um self-talk for maybe about five years then i went and got tested and then it was just a lifelong journey of how does this work for me and one key factor and you this is and this is where we, we met was on clubhouse right i walked in a neurodiverse room and bust out into tears i mean not walk in you know look at the words yeah. that we use to associate with clubhouse i walked right. in the room. <laughs> i went in the room and it was all of these wonderful, sweetheart of millennials talking about this wiring and, and being neurodiverse. And it was actually a room for black neurodiversity. And I, they knew exactly what happened to me when I started crying. They said, welcome home, Coco. You found your tribe. Yeah. I find ways, and then now I'm going to tie in that with the ADHD. Um, there are ways in which you can handle the, the anxiety associated with it or that by doing different things and breaking up your work. So on my, um, Instagram page, there's a digital download that I sell called the multi-genre artist creativity tool workbook. And what it is, it's a roadmap that you design for you to work on things that include play that include inspiration and include affirmations but first and foremost you have to um dissolve your ego mm. ego can come in the form of you know of, co of course over grandization hiding from your authentic self but also being a victim is part of ego too it's a safe place to run away from yourself so what we do first and foremost is i at you ask your ego to dissolve boom now you're in a place of power. Now you're going to add your affirmations before you start working and playing and creating. And you're going to decide how long you're going to work, how long you're going to play, and you can change it anytime you want to. So maybe you don't want to start your day off with um, doing scales, running scales if you're a musician. Maybe you want to start it out by being inspired. So you go on to YouTube and you look up your favorite artist, or you look up somebody that's different, or you let the playlist show you what they recommend and discover something new. And then you talk about it. You write about that experience. And you can do that as often as you want. But when you come to work and play, 
It is how you work. Not the way that Coco works, not the way that John works, but the way that that individual who is working with that toolkit works. And I've had college professors have um, like huge breakthroughs. Um, friends who are um, poets who have, who have put out tons and tons of book books come to me and say, this was, I do, you know, I'm mad at you because it made me get to some pain that I was hiding from <laughs> that I didn't want to get to. Um, but you have to trust the process. If you trust the process, it will work for you. It does magical things that I'm, I'm shocked. I was just writing something that was working for me and said, well, maybe it's somebody else out there like me that needs something like this and I'll, and, and we'll see what happens. But it's a lot of people who have been, been touched by it. And, and that's a blessing to really trust yourself. And if you feel that passion and that desire, it may seem weird. I didn't know, I didn't know anything about digital downloads. I was just a <laughs> displaced artist who is going through this, this pandemic with the rest of the world. How do I continue to create? How do I function in this, this world where I'm shut in and, and make the best of it? And that was one of the things that came about that. And also the podcast as well. Mm, nice, nice. Uh, you, you know, uh, I actually kind of want to touch on that. How's the podcast? Awesome. Um, we have we have been taking a little break because our last episode, the um, who was the young one of the young ladies that was on it, who was, I, I, she's a sister and a she's a big sister and a little sister. She's about fifteen years younger than me. No, long more than that. Maybe. Mm, anyway. <laughs> Let me tell you the story. This makes this is what makes it interesting. Her mother was one of my midwives. Oh. So I've been knowing her since she was a tiny, tiny little girl. So she tells me as she gets older and I, she she starts doing my hair that she been admiring me and looking up to me. And I'm like, what? And so anyway, we became sister friends. Oh. And she just made her transition a couple of weeks ago. And she was on the last one. So we're slowly coming back into it, but we were on Clubhouse last night, and we had a, a week. I have a club for fifty-year-old pussy, and we were in there and attracted some women, and we cut up sideways and had a good time, and was able to share stuff. It's the she shed. Hey. It's the aunties on the back porch having a glass of wine, talking to the young ladies, and putting them on game, game for life. Um, how to navigate things? What's the ritual behind? transition we talk about we talked about that we talked about um women who were you know the aunties and the, the grandmothers and stuff who you know had to you know make a play for mr johnson and mr johnson paid a bill but he had a family over there like respecting the hustle and respecting the struggle and not judging auntie and grandma because sometimes it might have been your mama who was out there <laughs> let's just keep it 100 Let's just yep. keep it 100. If we move out of a place of judging people for the choices that make, they make, we will have more understanding. Yes. You, we yes. can't look at at a James Brown or Richard Pryor and say, oh, that was so horrible that he grew up in a, in a, in a house of prostitution. That man was brilliant. He yes. brought so much. You know, I think comedians are healers. That's like the last stage of the healing process is to laugh. And they take very painful things and they turn it into lemonade. But some amazing people came out of some very painful living conditions. So we don't judge. We just share, and listen, and we grab what we need. And what we don't need, we leave it right there and we keep it moving. Hey, Vern, some people that are waving. One of my students, um, John Foster. Who else is down there? Okay, I'm not sorry. I'm interrupting the interview. No, you're good. You got it. Yeah, I mean, look, they they came for they came for the star of the show today. And that's, <laughs> that is you. Uh, but no, you you know you you're absolutely right. Moving from a place of judgment to a place of understanding would be absolutely amazing for this world. It would foster a whole lot more deeper connections, and I think that we would recognize that there's that that we are truly some well not alone for the most part. There's a lot of a lot of us are going through quite similar situations that we don't speak to because we don't feel like we can get that understanding because we feel like we'll just be judged. And I think that, you know, if we can move, if we can move away from that judgment mindset, it would be amazing for us, uh, especially our community. 
we we need it. <laughs> uh, I want to uh, definitely hit on hit on a couple of things that you've done, and you, you've been featured. You know, you've been, you were featured. In, uh, you're a featured musician in the book "Black Woman in Music: More Than the Blues." You're on the hit, hit show "Empire." Um, you won the ALTA Award for Best Original Music in a Play and the 2019 Non Equity Jeff Award for Best Original Music in a Play for uh, Tilikum. 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 And um, I want to I want to make sure I commend you for that because you know you were the that's the first for an African American woman. Um, <clears throat> you know your voice can be heard from planetariums to uh, the video games. Uh, I want to ask you, what is it that you see in the mirror after you've done so many amazing things? Wow. That's a question. Um, what do I see? I see Coco and I see somebody. Oops, drop the phone. I see someone that is very courageous who um, takes a lot of risk and oh this is so uncomfortable because I'm, hey, I'm being really honest because like you know I I haven't had an interview like this and, and someone to share that so I'm really 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 uncomfortable which is okay I embrace uncomfortability um I see Coco. I see the girl from Robbins with the scars on her leg um, who loves to walk outside with no shoes on. And then when I hear you say that, be like, oh, I did that? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But, you know, <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm, I'm looking at the comments. Hey, John. Yeah. Um, one of my amazing students that is an amazing saxophonist, composer, works at the Jazz Institute. I met him when he was in high school. That's, that's my baby. Can't be nothing different. Um, that's who I see. I see that little country girl who who still is silly, who still likes to jump rope, although she can't stay in the double dutch rope too long. Um, <laughs> I will get on a swing. Um, I suck at basketball, but I love to play it. That's who I see. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> That's real. That's real. <laughs> you know, um, whenever people whenever people um, try to describe themselves, they usually describe themselves based off of uh, you know the things that um, their their job titles, right? Um, but it, it's I feel like we are so much more than that. You know, which is why, like, which is why I pose the question, you know, who it is that you see in the mirror. Um, and honestly, I ask you this question and I'm just being transparent here. I still haven't answered it for myself, honestly. Thank you. <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> I just, uh, uh, because it's, it's, it's hard, you know, because we've, we're the only ones that, that have experienced every facet of our memories, right? So we know who we were when we were younger. We know who we were in our teens, 20s, 30s. You know, we know who we were, you know, and to be asked, okay, well, who am I? You know, who is reflected back to me? It's, it's hard to, it's hard to figure, it's hard to pinpoint that because, uh, you know, you can say that, oh, hey, I, I'm this person that overcame this situation, but I'm also this person that was depressed by this situation. Or, you know, you can pinpoint so many different things. Um, but for you to go and say, hey, look, I'm still me, you know, it's, it's it, I, that's why I say that's a real thing because some people let the, let that go. You know, mm -hmm. some people, like, some people, uh, separate themselves from that, from who, from that, from that child, you know, because, uh, you know, some people separate themselves from that, from that goofiness, you know, uh, even though it's a, it's a fun aspect of them. Um, it's weird, you know, um. But yeah, <laughs> I, I think people. I think people feel like they have to lose it. They feel like they have to be so adult. Like, oh my God, adulting is is very stressful. Can we laugh? Can we joke? Like, I gotta laugh at something every day. And then, like, I, this was one of the 
the funniest post I've ever seen on Facebook, and this shows you where my, my sense of humor is. It was a, a, a musician in Chicago who said, can you please post your top funeral gig stories? Oh, my God. You wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe the stuff. But it's humor. And I say all that to say it's humor and everything. You can go to a funeral and find something funny that may happen. I'm not saying we're laughing at the fact that the seat is gone. No. But there is a, a funny side to everything. And if we can find that funny and let that funny help us to heal, to process, we're going to be all right. Amen. Amen to them. Now, I want to ask you, you know, how important are the accolades, though, to you as a person? How important are they? I because think... you're a woman of first. And I, I got I to gotta say I'm proud of you because I, I mean, when it goes down to history, it goes down to history. And I know that she was the first one to get that award, first black woman ever to get that award right there. So it's, it's, it's history, but, you know, but to you, how important is that? Um, first of all, it was shocking. Mm. Um, the process was so difficult in finding three female percussionists for the show. And and I'm going to share this with you, and I have never shared this pub publicly. I was homeless at the time. Mm. So I, when the awards came, it was like if people only knew what the backstory was. Mm. And, and that goes back into saying you can create in any state of mind. Any state of mind. Don't wait for the joy endorphins to flow through you to sit down and make music don't wait for the muse to hit you to write create in whatever state you are i mean i've written some dope stuff in the pain just killing like i mean i haven't shared it with nobody to share it with myself it's dope for me but i you know <laughs> <laughs> no be no be real be real keep going <laughs> you know like ooh man ooh i was spit ooh spit yeah. you know but <laughs> I was, it took me out of that space. It took me out of that space. It took me in, it, 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 yeah, I got a chance to take, get it out, put the words down, whether I share them or not, I got them out. I made something with this. So I think, okay, this is what's important to me is yeah. doing something that's, if I can do something that's never been done and I can inspire somebody else. I'm the same little girl, the same little girl with scars on her legs that like to run around with no shoes on in Robbins because she country. Because <laughs> we country. We love it. We like to feel the grass. You know what I'm saying? I used to catch grasshoppers and stuff. So those things are just, I don't know, just rich. I don't know if I answered the question right. I like, didn't go all around the corner to make a heart mm -hmm. right. Hey, look, you, 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 you. You 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 did, you know you did. I feel like from, from 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 what you're saying that man, them accolades are cool, but you know who I like. It's just you place a higher, higher degree of importance to who you are, and um, I I can I can't I can't do nothing but respect that, you know. Uh, but the accolades are. But I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not gonna lie. I this this hand clap is for you, cause like hey, look, man, like. And, and, and while you were home, and, and while you were homeless too, yo, ma'am, if ain't nobody say congratulations, hey, congratulations, oh, uh, oh, uh, sincerely, sincerely. Now, now, can I, can I ask? Can, is it okay if I ask this? Yes. You got any projects coming up that you would like to let us know about? You know, on, on a frank conversation. Yes, yes, yes. I am going to. Be I'm I'm I'm, on, I'm it's gonna be one day shoot. I am making my first short film. Okay. And I'm gonna shoot it next Saturday. Okay. And I am in pre-production for my first solo release. Nice. And I can say who the producer is. I'm working with Alexis Lombre, who's an amazing pianist, an amazing composer, a millennial, and. Is I'm so excited. I don't know what to do. 
to see somebody to, to give somebody an idea and see him going. That hot. That goes hard. That goes hard, yeah. Coco. <laughs> I'm like, making you rock like that. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 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 you like this? Oh, bet. Oh, okay. We got okay, this. I got some more. Got some more of that. Got some more of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, if you have anybody that's, that's part of this film that you want me to interview when it debuts, you want me to come through, you know, let me know and I will be there. Well, <laughs> it's, it's two characters. It's myself and it's my niece who's going to play the younger version of me. Mm. I want to tell too much. Okay, 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 okay. Don't keep it on the rest. I can't wait though. I cannot wait though. I, I would, I, I would love to see it. Love okay, see definitely. It. And we can we can revisit and talk about that process because I am going. My whole crew is twenty five and under. My whole mm. entire crew, and I, you know, I'm I'm from I'm a Gen Xer that loves millennials. And I love Gen Zers too. They, y'all, man, y'all fierce. You're a millennial, right? Um, I was born 90. What does that oh, mean? Oh, you are clearly a millennial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're, um. I was, I was, I was, I had the cassettes. I had the, I was, I, I was recording the radio. I had the CDs. I had the, I was burning CDs. I was burning DVDs too. I went through it all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, you're a millennial. Yeah, I love you all. I love your energy. I love your spirit. You guys are fearless, very creative, and I don't have no problems. I'm not these young people out here don't know <laughs> nothing about nothing. That's not me. I'm not that. I'm not that auntie. <laughs> No. I, mean, we appreciate I don't even want to hear it. I'd be like, oh my God, are they really getting ready to say they just ain't like we were? I don't want that. We don't need them to be like us, okay? Why are we going to be keep repeating the same old thing? We're going to get the same results. Same like, results. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the thing. You keep it in a closed loop, you're going to keep getting the same issues. The same issues. You got to open that up, you know, because somebody, somebody can walk in with an amazing idea on how to fix so many different problems, which is why, you know, uh, I like, I like, I love, I love where I'm at because I feel like we really are that bridge between the prior generation and the next because we, we literally saw the transition and we understood why it was transitioning, you know, especially when it came to the mindset. We came from, we, you know, we were the last ones to like really just take on the, just take what they, take what they're telling us, but translate it in a different way and try to fix it your way, you know, we were, that was us. The bridge. I like to call us the bridge. You Millennial. are. Millennials mm -hmm. are the bridge. I never looked at it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to get into the goal of this show. Uh, I only have two more questions for you. And the goal of this show, as always, is philanthropy. Um, garnering support from the audience, the onlookers, and putting it towards a charity or nonprofit that you care about. Uh, what charity or nonprofit would you like to spotlight today? And why is the cause that it faces so important to you? Well, the AACM, the Association for the Advancement of Creative Musicians, and I am the, currently the chair. I am the second female chair in our 56-year history. We went through a revival, and we got a whole bunch of members that had um, been active. You know, we had COVID and everything, and we had some exciting things. So if anybody would like Make a contribution to the AACM. You can go to aacmchicago.com and you'll see a prompt there that will lead you to make a donation. Hey, okay, aacmchicago.com. So for all those. I mean, I'm sorry, sorry. I mean, aacmchicago.org. .org. Okay, cool. cool. aacmchicago.org. So if anybody would like to make a donation, uh, please, please, please go ahead, head over there, give directly to them. And support, 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 support. Uh, we have a tradition here before we close out. I always like to uh, ask for words of wisdom for the next generation. And I want to ask, you know, what words would you have for any artist? Because I was reading your, I was reading about, you know, your book. And uh, you touched on negative self-talk and tra transforming it into positivity. Um and I was wondering, you know, what words of wisdom would you have for any artist 
who feels inhibited by their negative self-talk. Stop it and say something different. Change the dialogue. When you hear it, stop it. Have that. Put affirmations in your notes if you got an iPhone. Put it in. I'm sure every phone has an area where you can put in notes. Um, I like to, I don't schedule my clock for 11 11, but if I happen to see that it's 11 11, I pull up my affirmations and read them during that time because that's like a wonderful portal of positivity. It's to drop down, drop in, and, and fuel yourself with that. We all fall out of the rhythm and flow of positivity at some point in our lives, sometimes every day, sometimes some people every hour. But if you catch it, then you can redirect it and turn it into something different. And um, affirmations, I am, not I will be, not I want to be, not I desire, I am. In the affirmative, past tense, you already did it. I am this. And you say that self to yourself, you, it gets into your subconscious, and then when you sleep, it's running in the background. I am amazing. I'm this, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to sleep. It's running in the background. Screaming all these wonderful things. You're having lucid dreams and stuff like that. Stuff start manifesting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I haven't had a negative thought in about three hours. What the hell? <laughs> That's what I was share. Catch the negative self-talk. Redirect it. You can do anything you want to do. Believe in yourself. Keep your dreams to yourself until you are ready for them to have legs. You don't take a baby out of the house when it's when it's two weeks old and start putting it in front of people. You got to make sure that baby is strong enough, the immune system is enough to hang around those things. Do that with your dreams. And if you share with somebody, make sure it's somebody that is going to speak life into that dream. Because there's a lot of haters out here. They be like, oh, you can't do that. Why are you going to do that for? Why are you doing all that? Don't. Don't do that. Love your love your entity, your idea. That's the seed. Love it so much and have fears pro protect it while it's being born. Now, when you make that poem, you write that poem and you make that song or you write that composition, now it's, it's strong. It can stand on its own. It's, it's, it's its own thing. It's been born. It's been birthed. You know, that's what I would like to share. I want to say, Coco, thank you so, so much for your time, for your energy, for the laughs, for your wisdom. I sincerely appreciate you. And like I said, I'm speaking nothing but life, blessing, success, peace over you, your family, and everything that you will touch. Um, all your dreams are going to come to fruition, not only yours, but also your family members as well. Oh, thank you. And I send that right back to you and to everybody that is on this call. Thank you. Thank you for listening, audience. I'm sorry I couldn't respond to the to the message, you know, because it's, it's a lot of folks that send it lots of love. And I am so grateful for my Chicago family showing up. Oh, uh, Vern and oh, it's so much. John, who else can you shout out? Zach. <laughs> Slim Diddy. K Slim Diddy. <laughs> Okay, all right. Why does it help? Okay, no. Okay, now we can take up the ratchet. And let you yourself have ratchet moments. Thank you. This was hey. so fun. Hey, that's what I'm here for. I'm telling you, look, and if you know anybody that that, that, that would like an interview or, you know, if you want, when, when I'm, whenever I get my second uh, dose of the vaccine, you want to do this in person, you let me know. I'm definitely all for it. Just, yeah. Um, yeah, I love, I, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Did I lose it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing to know. I'm sorry, doing too much, doing too much, doing too much. <laughs> I think I sent you another request for my mistake. <laughs> it's time for me to get off this call. <laughs> hey, Leon. <laughs> hey, you have, a blessed, you have a blessed, amazing day. You too. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. That was Coco, you guys. Please make sure you guys are not only following her, but you go to aacmchicago.org and donate towards them. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in this evening. Big shout out to all my people for, for coming. What up, Bella? I see you, girl. I know you in Brazil. What you doing on here? What up? Uh, uh, and yeah, man, everyone, thank you all so, so much. And if you enjoy what I'm doing, dollar sign Eza Moon, 
60% goes to a charity or nonprofit named on the show. 40% goes to powering the show and making it even better, even greater. Root to the cues. Yeah. And big shout out to all the rest of the D9, my Sigma family as well, because I love them too. Um, and yeah, I'm Izamu. I'm not doing it unless it's fun and it helps people. Peace. Purchase my book, Purple Mike Wants a Bike, at Amazon.com. You can find it there. Just type in Purple Mike, type in Ease of the Moon, and it'll pop up. If you guys want to follow me, no, not even if, go follow me at Ease of the Moon underscore on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Ease of the Moon, and I'm not doing it unless it's fun and it helps people.